Each to their own, I suppose, but when you're the king of 70 million people with the wealth in excess of $70 billion, is it right to be seen frolicking around in a crop top rather than a crown? Many of the subjects of the Thai monarch, King Vajira Longkorn, certainly don't like his skimpy outfits, but they're more furious about other parts of his outlandish lifestyle, his womanising, his alleged brutality, and the fact he seems to prefer the crisp air of the Bavarian Alps to the humidity of Bangkok. Oh, and there's also the small matter of Fufu, the pet poodle he appointed Chief Marshal of Thailand's Air Force. Germany's picturesque Alps might seem a strange place to start a story on the King of Thailand. But lately, these hills have been alive with the sounds of scandal. It's hard to believe, but you're looking at the richest monarch in the world, wearing a crop top and fake tattoos, enjoying an ice cream at a Bavarian shopping centre with one of his many lovers. It's this racy lifestyle that's seen King Vajira Longkorn called the demigod, who's a semi-Kardashian. While security guards might try to shield him, the king's signature outfit has been spotted in department stores, hopping into his chauffeur-driven limousine, and even when he's out cycling, the region's rolling hills. Have you seen him around the town? Sometimes he uh, goes to the Zugspitze without clothes. Yeah, naked. Yeah, yeah. 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 naked. But now the king has been forced to head home to Thailand in his private jet as protesters ignore the threat of arrest for speaking out against their ruler. Against the backdrop of alleged political interference and reckless spending by the monarch, tens of thousands have overtaken the streets of Bangkok, fed up with their out of touch and out of town king. He wants the power, he wants the wealth. He just doesn't want to do the duties. Thailand is world famous as an idyllic holiday destination home to some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet, it's known as the Land of Smiles. And nothing brought the proud locals more happiness than their previous king, Boomerbol. Universally respected, he was the world's longest reigning monarch, ruling for an extraordinary 70 years. His death back in 2016 sparked a year of mourning unbridled grief for a leader they adored. He was replaced by his only son, the less popular Vajira Longkorn, who now also has to be treated with godlike adoration, including his wife laying at his feet. But for the first time, there are critics asking if this is a king worthy of their respect. I wasn't able to go back to Thailand. I'd be jailed if I go back to Thailand because I've broken Thai law repeatedly by writing about the monarchy. And once I'd got started, once I already broke the law once, I thought I might as well keep going. Journalist Andrew McGregor Marshall was forced to flee Bangkok and move to Edinburgh after becoming a vocal critic of King Vajira Longkorn when reporting for Reuters. We love them all of them. The first red flag for many was the way the king treated women amassing four wives and countless mistresses. So there's all these marital scandals. He's known as a womanizer. He's believed to be living in, in, in Bavaria with a huge harem of women. And many of the women in the harem have been given a special surname and a military rank. So he's got an, his own army regiment for his lovers. Exactly. And according to palace sources, they've even been organised into a quasi-military unit, which the king calls the SAS, after Britain's special air service. And they even have the same motto, who dares wins. A few years ago, this salacious video leaked. The palace didn't want the world to see the embarrassing footage. The king is with his third wife, Sirarasmi who's topless and in a G-string. 
celebrating the birthday of her husband's beloved pet poodle, Fufu. In fact, the king adored his dog so much, he crowned the canine as a senior ranking official in Thailand's Air Force. Is Air Chief Marshal Fufu the highest ranking dog you've ever heard of? I think so, and there are some really interesting details in leaked US Embassy cables about Thailand where, where Fufu was appearing at you know, royal dinners wearing uniforms. He would sometimes wear a little tuxedo and little boots, and he'd be allowed to jump up on the table and, and eat from all the ambassador's plates, and nobody dared say anything. Uh, Fufu died a few years ago, and he was given a four-day state funeral. The bizarre behaviour was tolerated when Vajira Longcorn was crown prince. But since his $40 million coronation in 2016, the new king's quirks and extravagant spending have raised eyebrows. The royal family's wealth is estimated at more than $70 billion, and the king stands accused of funding his wild ways in Germany at the expense of Thai taxpayers lavish lifestyle. He spends most of his time in a luxury hotel in Bavaria where he's rented the entire hotel for himself and his entourage. Um, he has three Boeing 737 planes, so he's spending a huge amount of money and it's Thai taxpayers that are footing all the bill for this. When you're ten times richer than the Queen of England, you're really having a laugh, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. He's the richest monarch in the world, so it's quite extraordinary. It's possible that he enjoys the freedom when he's in Germany of just letting loose and wearing, <laughs> wearing whatever he chooses. And Thais have been quite shocked by these images because, you know, they do expect their monarch to behave in a certain way and, and to follow Buddhist principles. And, and when they see him walking around malls in Germany with fake tattoos with some of his mistresses, it did cause quite significant shock in Thailand. Coming up, the king and us. We were young men training to go to war. How Australia influenced the young royal. Not many people really know the real Majiro Alonkorn. And the top secret government cables. The king's cruelty is, is one of the most worrying things. Exposing the king's torment. His dictatorship with a smile. That's next on 60 Minutes. Long before King Vajira Longkorn's controversial reign in Thailand, he was just another cadet cutting his teeth at Duntroon Military College in Canberra. Not many people really know the real Vajira Longkorn. Uh, it really, I probably in, in his life, the only people that got to intimately know him would have been the people at, at Duntroon that were close to him over that four years. Gary Stone was assigned to be the then Crown Prince of Thailand's mentor when he arrived in Australia in 1972. This is a photo of the two of them from the time, the pair becoming firm friends over the next four years. He's the king now, but when he came out here as a young man, uh, what was he like? He did everything we expected of him, and, and we were young men training to go to war. I mean, uh, at, at the time, like, I suppose this is the fascinating thing, reflecting back all these years. At the time, it, it was just no, so normal. There was no, there was no big deal about it, you know. Vajira Lonkorn, we call him Vaji. He, he was one of our section, part of our platoon, and uh, and yeah, there was no special treatment for him. I suppose it is rather wonderful, really. But there were challenges. We can reveal secret Australian government cables from the time, which show Vajira Lonkorn struggled when he first came to our shores. He is obviously unsure of himself needs others to lean on and is seeking security, noted a senior military official. Later, a cable from our ambassador said he believed the Crown Prince found his future responsibilities as king traumatic, bewildering and overwhelming. Must be a lot of pressure on a young man like that coming out here to, to learn the, the rough and tumble of life, knowing that one day he's going to be the ruler of a country. I often thought about that, I, and I even talked to him about it at times. I don't think he... He, uh, I don't think he fully sort of comprehended that, what, what might be ahead of him. Various sort of criticisms have been made for every royal family member all around, all around the world, and uh, I don't know that many people really know the, uh, the Vajira Longcorn that we got to know at, at Duntroon. Personally, he's, he's a quiet, reserved uh, and quite polite and respectful person, and 
Yeah, and I think that that's that's the sort of the character we experience there, and uh, and I'm sure that's what um, you know that that's the way he li he's lived most of his life. On the expense of the taxpayers' money. The protests against the King of Thailand have now spread to Australia. The protesters here hold photos of activists who've gone missing. They're known as the disappeared. Since 2016, they've been disappearing in mysterious circumstances, and at least two of them have, have washed up dead in the Mekong River with their legs broken, disemboweled, their stomachs stuffed with concrete. Andrew McGregor Marshall is an exiled investigative journalist who's been documenting these disturbing developments in Thailand. The king's cruelty is, is one of the most worrying things about him. We, we've seen that in his treatment of his former wives and of his current mistress, who was thrown in jail for 10 months just, just last year, only got out recently, um, with no real legal process. The king's vindictiveness and abuse of power, it sounds almost like a, a crazed monarch out of Game of Thrones or, or something at times. Absolutely, and this is the problem with monarchy, right? Because you can never be sure whether the the hereditary heir is, is going to be a good king. One of the few things that people used to gossip quite openly about the monarchy during the reign of the previous king, people loved King Pumipon, but they were really afraid of what would happen when Vajira Longhorn took the throne. His behaviour is almost pathological. He is almost like an elderly King Joffrey. He seems to go out of his way to be cruel. He seems to go out of his way to proclaim that he is the absolute power in Thailand. And that's what has Thais so worried, and that's why so many people are taking to the streets to try to oppose him. More of these protests are planned for the coming week. Fed up with the King's alleged political interference and expensive lifestyle, activists like Bo Mahatana are demanding reform. Thailand's famous deference to the King has now been replaced by defiance. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.